Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 10 of my fitness database series. I'm building a fitness tracking database for my own use, but you don't have to carry about fitness, carry about, care about fitness. The real values and all the techniques I'm showing you, tables, forms, queries, VBA, all that stuff, which apply to any access database, whether it's customers, inventory, orders, the skills are all the same. All right, so if you haven't watched parts one through nine yet, go watch those and then come on back. Okay, like we talked about in the last video, if I add something, I think I deleted, oh, here it is, ham sandwich is still here. All right, let's delete the ham sandwich. Yes, notice how it sticks around down there with the H's. Okay, that's good. Let's add something else. Let's add um, uh, a yellow bunny. I don't know what, D bunnies? Okay, save it. And now nothing appears to happen. I want the same kind of thing to happen, right? Is it even showing up here? No, so we'd have to requery this and then find the yellow bunny and it's down here. All right, but I want that save button to do kind of what the delete button does. I want it to put us on that yellow bunny. Okay, so let's go to design view. Let's go into the code behind that save button. All right, so right here now, it's possible they might have closed the list form. So we're going to open it if not. So if is loaded the food list F, then we're going to record set requery it. So forms food list F dot record set dot requery. Otherwise, we're going to open it. Do command open form food list F. And if. All right, so now the form's open either way. Okay. Now what we have to do is we're going to open up. Now, you you can do find and stuff in the form, but I don't like that. I don't like jumping around between different controls, doing find first, find next. That's fine, but that's basic stuff. That's for, that's for entry-level developers. We're going to use a record set clone. Okay. So the record set clone is basically... A memory version of the records that are in that form but they're in a record set and so you can you can search through them you can move around through them and then when you find the one you're looking for you can then say I want the form to match where I am in the record set clone okay now I've covered record set clone in my developer lessons and I did cover it in this videos extended cut so if you look, I cover it right down here in the extended cut. So if you want to learn more, sign up. <laughs> but here's how it works in a nutshell. We're going to dim RS as a record set. I do have a free video on record sets. If you're not familiar with record sets and you want to learn a little bit about them, this video will teach you about a record set is basically just a way of looping through records in a table or query in memory in, in the computer in, in VBA. So you can see right here, for example, we loop through all the customers and just display them in the status box. That's what a record set's good. That's one of the things a record set's good for. And every form has a record set clone underneath it, which basically is kind of the same as exactly what records are in the form itself. It's a little complicated, but that's in, the, in a nutshell. All right, now we're gonna set RS equals forms food list F dot record set clone. Okay, so our RS is now equal to the exact same set of records in the food list. Okay, same fields, same records, same everything. And now we can use find first to find the record we're looking for in that record set clone. So RS dot find first, and then it's gonna be food ID equals whatever food ID we're on. This is the food form. Remember, we're in the food form now. Okay, we're saving the food item and we want to find it in the food list. Okay, now you should always find it. It should always be there because we just saved it, right? This commits it to the table and this requeries or reloads it. So it should be in there. There's, unless there's an error somehow, like maybe you've got, I don't know, an indexing violation or something. But just in case you don't find it, I like to say, if not rs dot no match i know it's a double negative no rs dot no match means i didn't find it which should never happen 
So you could write if RS no match, then message box. I didn't, you know, let's, let's do it that way. I hate double negatives. This is kind of how I have it in my head. If RS dot no match, then let's message box cannot find food item. All right, but that should never happen. Otherwise, we've located the food item now. So we're going to set the forms bookmark equal to the record sets bookmark. Okay, so forms food list f dot bookmark equals rs dot bookmark. Now the bookmark is basically what record you're on. Where are you in this record set? Okay, we did a find first up here. So that's where the bookmark is. So I'm saying set the bookmark of the form equal to the bookmark of the record set. Basically, it's gonna put us on the same record. And then once we've done that, put the focus on whatever control you want. So forms, food, list, F. Yes, I know I could have used a width, but I don't use a width unless I got a bunch of stuff. Food group, let's say, dot set focus. Or you could put it on the, the description, whichever field you want. Okay. All right, only thing left to do at this point is RS close. And remember, if you set it, you gotta forget it. Set RS equals nothing. And yes, I do have that on my mouse pad. Yes, this is my actual mouse pad and my actual mouse. And this is my thing you can get in my store on my website. And yes, I do have a Star Trek desk mat too that lights up. It's really cool. No, I don't sell these. It's just awesome. <laughs> I found it online. I'm like, yes, I have to have one. All right, so anyways, we're done with this. Let's get rid of the extra spaces and save it. Debug compile once in a while. That's on a mouse pad too. <laughs> All right, now let's get rid of yellow bunny. Delete. And let's add a new one. Let's add that ham sandwich back in. Ham sandwich. And we're gonna save. And oh, 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 oh okay. What did I do? Debug. And let's see here. Oh, okay. Okay, this is an interesting one. And I'm glad I made... See, this is why we're building this together. Because I made a stupid mistake. I would probably say that this mistake is the cause of about 80% of the forum posts that I answer and, uh, and the emails that I get. Now, it stopped and is loaded. We're going to add some error handling to this. But... If you hover over form name, if you hover over, there it goes, you can see the goof. Yeah, it's a spelling error. Foot list. Not, not to be confused with foot loose. So that's what threw the error. Okay, so we'll handle that in just a second. Actually, let's just handle it now. Um, I'm just going to throw... Let's say, let's say is loaded equals false. And then we're going to say on error resume next. So basically it's going to return a false unless this returns a true, because if the form name isn't found in the all forms collection, which it isn't here, then it's not loaded, is it? <laughs> all right. So now let's go find foot list. Yep. There it is. Where, no, that's not it. Where is it? Is loaded foot food list yeah we could do um we could probably make a more robust is loaded function to actually check to see if that exists i'll probably do that later maybe in an extended cut but for now that'll fix the problem all right but now i've fixed my silly spelling error again let's save it debug compile and let's see here all right ham sandwich save it and it put it right on the ham sandwich uh, let's put the focus on the description field, though, not on the group. So back to code, and we're going to go, I think it's description, right? Yeah. So let's do yo-yo, uh, and then save it. And, oop, can't find it. See, I'm me and these spelling errors. What is it? Food description. Man, see? See, it's not just you. <laughs> That's me too. I am horrible with some of the spelling. I think because did I put is it food description in the table? Let's see. Yeah, see, it's just it's just description in the table, but in the query it becomes food description because there's also a group description. So that's that's why that happened. Okay, all right. 
We should be good to go now. Now, let's go in here and get rid of... Well, actually, one thing I want to do is I want to assign these things in the groups. I'm keeping some of these in here. So chichi beans, that's a legume. I love chichi beans. Uh, canned chickens of protein. Grilled chickens of protein. And again, the reason why I've got them both here, nutritionally, they're about the same. But when I make like a, like I do chicken and rice or something, if I open up a canned chicken, I just, that's just the serving size. Whereas if I'm grilling it, I might actually weigh it, or if it's a chicken breast, it could be four to six ounces, that kind of thing. Coffee is a beverage. Uh, egg, dairy. Actually, I, I like to store eggs under protein. I know they're dairy, but I use them as a source of protein. I like to put them in salads and stuff. Fish, protein. Grapes, uh, fruit. Oh, that's nice. If you just click over here, this guy opens up this guy and the focus stays on that box. That's really nice. So that's a grain. And then we can scroll down here. That's mixed vegetables. It's vegetables. Veg See what I'm doing? Vegetables. That's a fat. Nope. Oil. Yep. Rice is a grain. Salmon is a protein. Protein. See, this is a pre-published or pre pre-packaged salmon dinner that I buy from Publix, which is our local grocery store. It's a, it's like a four or five ounce uh, salmon filet with some, with some noodles in it. It's really good. Tangerine. Okay. I got tangerine already. So we'll delete that guy. Yes. All right. Flour tortilla is grain. Whoops. See, I didn't make sure that my focus was there. That's a grain. Walnuts is a nut. Yogurt. Fat free one. Cup. Okay. So fat free one cup. This means I've got the, the big giant tub of it, in which case I'll scoop it out and measure a cup. So that's why they got two separate ones. And Oikos Pro is one of my favorites. So both of these are dairy. Actually, I, I, I really consider those protein too, but oh well. We'll worry about that stuff later. Okay, so my food list is all good now. One more thing I want to do, I want this to be rich text because sometimes I want to like highlight this and make it big and red and bold and be like, don't buy it again. Whoop, someone's beaming in. So let's come into the table. Now you don't have to set it in the table in food tea, but I like to. Uh, long text right here. Come down to text format, set that to rich text. All right. If you, if you leave this normal text and you leave and you set it to rich text on the form, what'll happen is you'll see HTML codes in the table design, which isn't a bad thing. Sometimes I actually prefer that. Sometimes I'll put two fields on a form so I can see the HTML codes and the regular, what it looks like. Um, but now we'll just go back into our, this guy and design view. And we'll open this guy up and go to data and then change that to rich text. Why this is under data and not format, I don't know. Save it, close it, close it. And let's go into here and highlight this and bold it. Okay. Highlight red, maybe do one of these jobs and then do this and go like that. Okay. Oh, buy. now I don't have to buy it. Again. And nothing against the Aloha bar. The Aloha bar isn't bad. It's just got that little bit of a chalky taste to it. And th there's others that are better. That's why it's, I, I don't mind the Aloha bars. Save it. Okay. All right, got some extended cut stuff for today too. Um, we're gonna fix the form load sort problem. I noticed this earlier um, when we close it and open it and then close it and open it. Notice the food item sort is flipping every time. See, now it's sorted reversed. Now it's sorted forward. See, ascending <laughs> every time it flips. I'll explain why in the extended cut. Um, uh, Non-members, you don't have that problem because yours doesn't sort, ours does. Uh, we're going to add is active so we can have active food items. We're going to put a little check box right here or a little filter box right there so we can we can mark foods as not active if you don't plan on using them anymore, but you don't want to get rid of them, but you don't want to see them in the list. We'll use the is active for that. And so that's all covered in the extended cut for the members. And for the rest of you, if you want to learn more about record sets, I know I spent some time today going over record sets. Watch that free video that I have. But also, I spend a ton of time in my full developer course working with record sets because they are very, very powerful. 
You can do all kinds of stuff with record sets behind the scenes without having to manipulate forms and do stuff like that. Uh, I start covering them in Access Developer 16. I, I, from that point on, almost every lesson has something with record sets in it. So it's a, it's a very uh, powerful uh, uh, feature of Access that you can really use to do some cool stuff. So I'll put a link to this down below as well. Check it out. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. Um, I think we're going to start. I'm not going to tell you, but I think we're I think we're going to start actually making um, meals in in part eleven. I, I, I could, I'm, my checklist of stuff is done, but I'll, I always find more stuff that I want to add. So that's going to do it for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. Regardless of what we're covering, I'll see you tomorrow for part eleven. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.